Hey, thanks for making it to Veterans Info Tap. I'm glad you made it. What changes are we expecting to see in 2025 from the VA with regard to your rating ability? This is the schedule of ratings, right? The changes that are going to be impacting veterans with regard to their claims for VA disability compensation. Now, I'll start it off with if you're already uh, in the system and currently rated, uh, with a service-connected condition uh, for any of these conditions, you're just grandfathered in, right? You just keep moving along as you are, and that's fine. They will uh, rate you against your old rating schedule and keep you there. For those that have never filed a claim and are going to be getting ready to file a claim, what can you expect? And, oh, by the way, if you're better off on the new criteria, then you need to dust off your evidence and start preparing now uh, for an eventual uh, increase, right? To file for an increase. Uh, the VA will not do any of this for you, right? Even if it is clear as day that your rating on a new schedule would be, for example, 70%, based on your old rating schedule at 30, the VA is not gonna do anything for you. You have to initiate it. You would have to file in this uh, example, a supplemental claim in order to get the VA to take action, look at the new rating schedule and then determine the appropriate rating. With that, let's talk about what changes we can expect in the rating schedules here in 2025. It's around the corner, folks. And we're looking at probably April is what the VA is aiming for to make these changes. April of uh, 2025. April of 2025. It's around the corner. And uh, let's uh, let's jump into it. Hit the thumbs up for me. Subscribe. Share with a friend. All that good stuff. I really appreciate it. The two asks. Hit the thumbs up. Let the video run if you have that ability. It really does help to put this information into the hands of more of us. And together, we can make sure more of us are aware, right? It's us helping each other. It's the whole, if we don't take care of each other, something went wrong attitude. Many hands make light work and it's a way that we can all make sure that uh, none of us is, is left in the dark, right? Uh, so uh, that's that's awesome if you could do that. Uh, if you want to support the channel in other ways, you can become a member, go to the homepage, you'll see the tabs there, videos and shorts and lives and all that stuff. And you'll see one that says members and you can click on that. Thank you so much to all your members. I uh, really appreciate your support. All right, so let's jump into this topic. All right, this is the announcement back in February of 2022 that outlines the changes that the VA will be making. This information is all in the Federal Register. The last change that got uh, uh, put into effect was the digestive system stuff with GERD, and it really was kind of a step in the wrong direction. Uh, but it took five years for that to uh, come to fruition. So it takes a while for all of this stuff to unfold, right? From a proposal to implementation. Uh, this has been, you know, I guess once we get to April, it'll be three years, right? So three years in the making of this change for these body systems. Now, there's no guarantee that it's going to happen in April. We just were going off to what the VA is saying. The VA had posted in another publication that uh, their final date for these changes is, is moved uh, to April of 2025. So now that I've prefaced it with that, we're kind of going back to read uh, again what they had talked about. And this just gives a really good snapshot. So again, if you're on any of these sort of, uh, if you have any of these conditions currently, they might get better. Uh, ratings, not better condition-wise, your condition might warrant a better rating with a change. Or it could go the other way. The rating could be a worse rating, therefore you're never going to want to file for an increase most likely, right? Um, because it is what it is. And um, for those that have never filed a claim, you might want to file a claim and uh, if you if you have that ability. If you're still in the military and you got a year and a half left, well, you just got to kind of sit back and wait. If you have less than six months, you could file a claim now if it's six to three months from your uh, discharge date. So that would be a benefits delivery at discharge. 
Okay, God, I know it's been a lot of talking. Let's jump into it. In a news release posted back then, the VA proposed changes to the VA schedule for rating disability, specifically pertaining to the respiratory, auditory, and mental health disorder body systems, okay? Those three are what they're looking at. Respiratory, which impacts uh, sleep apnea, right? Auditory, which is uh, affecting your hearing and you know tinnitus, all that. Mental disorders, and these changes would incorporate medical advancement for treating uh, certain disabilities with modern medical knowledge to more accurately compensate veterans. So the rating schedule is used to determine the appropriate level of compensation, your money in your pocket, for each service-connected disability based on the severity of the condition as documented by supporting medical evidence. VA is in the process of updating all the body systems in the in the rating schedules uh, to reflect modern evaluating criteria based on advancements in medical terminology, diagnostics, and treatment. What they just said there was they're changing all of the rating schedules. I don't know how many they have, 12, 15 different rating schedules. They've already changed more than half, probably close to three quarters of them. So don't think that this is not going to happen. It is going to happen. Uh, moving on. On February 15th of 2022, the Veterans Benefits Administration published a rule in the Federal Register regarding changes to the regulations for the two body systems, respiratory system, uh, ear, nose, and throat conditions, and auditory disorders, and mental disorders. So there's kind of, it's it's kind of like two shoved into one and then a freestanding. So uh, the respiratory system, ear, nose, and throat conditions, and auditory disorders is one, and then mental disorders is the other. Uh, veterans and the public had 60 days to comment on those proposed rule changes. Since these are proposed changes, they will not affect evaluations of any veteran currently receiving compensation for the uh, impacted disability. Instead, this is an opportunity for veterans and the public to comment on these proposed changes over the next 60 days, which that's already came and went. Some of the proposed changes include modernizing the evaluation criteria for sleep apnea by evaluating it based on the symptoms responsiveness to treatment. If symptoms are fully treated by a CPAP machine or other treatment verified by a sleep study, a veteran would be rated at 0%. Okay, what's the difference? Today, if you have sleep apnea, and you have a CPAP, 50% rating, okay? So they're talking about moving you, not you, because if you already have it, if you already have sleep apnea with a CPAP at 50%, you're golden. But if you have sleep apnea with a CPAP today and you're not rated with the VA and you decide to wait to file a claim for whatever reason, uh, you're just dragging your feet, you could end up dragging your feet too long. The VA makes the proposed change and then you get a 0% instead of a 50. Just saying. All right, moving on. VA will award progressively higher percentage evaluations based upon how symptomatic the condition remains after treatment. This will bring the rating criteria for sleep apnea more closely in line with the stated purpose of the rating schedule, which is to provide evaluations based upon average impairment of earning capacity. For respiratory conditions such as asthma, and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, the proposed rules would slightly lower the requirements for a 100% rating. So it's gonna open it up a little bit. If you're at a high rating, you might actually be able to push and cross the threshold to 100% after the uh, rating change goes into effect. So keep your eye on this rating change for asthma and COPD. For tinnitus, that ringing in your ear, the proposed changes would recognize that symptom, uh, would recognize that symptom within the veteran's broader ailment and provide service-connected compensation for tinnitus through the disease to which it is attributed. So, in other words, you can't just say I have tinnitus ringing in the ear. They're going to say, well, what disease is that from? So you're going to need to backtrack further than that to figure out where a disease may be uh, that could cause that, right? Now, there's a couple other little quirky things with it, um, but there are several sorts of uh, you know ailments out there that would cause um, some tinnitus. Maybe you have a TBI with tinnitus. Maybe you have... Um, so then it would be TBI. 
right? You wouldn't get a tinnitus rating. They would focus on your TBI and the tinnitus would just be a symptom of that. Uh, Meniere's disease, uh, it can be or it cannot be with tinnitus. So they would just associate it with that and that would be your rating over there. Uh, so they're basically eliminating the freestanding tinnitus aspect. Now, if you had tinnitus and based on my fuzzy memory, I think that what they're proposing here as well, it's not written in here, but what I think I remember reading is if you had a 0% rating for hearing with tinnitus, they would bump you to 10 so that's the one kind of one thing that you could get there. All right, moving on. The proposed rule for mental health conditions would increase the minimum disability rating from 0% to 10%. So that's good. There's no more 0%. Don't know how many people are really on a zero, um, to be honest, but maybe there is. So if you're at zero, then you would automatically... Um, well, not automatically. You would have to file for an increase, and then they would then rate you at a minimum 10. The rule would get rid of the dated part of the rating schedule that prevents veterans from getting a 100% rating for mental health condition if they are able to work. That is huge. So what they're talking about is the 100% rating for mental health that says that you have to have total social and occupational impairment. Okay, They're removing that, which is huge. Next, VA will ensure veterans get the compensation they need and deserve, especially when it comes to mental disorders. Under the proposed changes, VA plans to use new evaluation criteria to more accurately capture the different domains of impairment caused by mental disabilities and provide more adequate compensation for financial loss experienced by veterans with service-connected mental disorders. Rather than assigning an evaluation based on the number and type of symptoms present, these changes would evaluate mental disorders based on how impactful the disability is across five domains of impairment. Those are con cognition, interpersonal interactions and relationships, task completion, uh, life activities is four, and navigating, or life activities and navigating environments is four, self care is five. Uh, so those would be your five. And uh, with that, we'll go ahead and end it there. Um, you know, this is what we're expecting to see in 2025. The VA is stating April, April of 2025, uh, the changes to the respiratory, auditory, and mental health rating schedules. It's either going to be good for you or bad for you. If it's bad for you, make sure you're rated now or file a claim now. If it's good for you and you're already rated, then start working on evidence for that future uh, potential increase, uh, claim for an increase through a supplemental. So with that, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. Have a great one. And remember, if we don't take care of each other, something went wrong.